Destiny Preparation Church. Can y'all help me? Put your hands together. Come on. Sound of freedom. We're free because the curse of sin has been broken. And Jesus Christ has set us free. Hello, this is Pastor David Stewart of Destiny Preparation Church. Welcome you once again to our program, Road to Destiny, brought to you by Destiny Preparation Church. I pray that you're being blessed and that you've had a blessed week. I want to welcome you to the program once again. Glad to have you tuning in with us again on the program. Wherever you are, however you're picking us up, whether you're in the suburbs, whether you're in the city, whether you're watching us on, on uh, the internet, we are blessed to have you with us, and I pray that this will be a blessing to you. And hey, let me just share with you, by the way, anytime you'd like a copy of our program, Program. It is available to, uh, to you. You can uh, send us a letter, send us something, and we can send you a DVD copy of the program. We do that at no cost. You can send us a donation for it uh, towards uh, the cost of that and the shipping and handling, etc. And uh, we'll send it to you. And I pray that you'll not only be blessed by it, but perhaps you, you'll see something here uh, that you feel needs to, you need to, to share with somebody else. It's an opportunity for you to share in the ministry by sharing it with somebody in your family, a family member, a friend whatever the case may be, feel free to, to send us a request. You can send it to us at our mailing address, uh, Destiny Preparation Church, 3177 Long Pond Road, number 135, Rochester, New York, 14612. Or send us an email at prayer at def, uh, destinypreparation.org, uh, and uh, we'd be happy to respond back to that to you. All right, now I want to share with you again that you can also join us at any of our services that take place here. Uh, we are located at 1230 Long Pond just down the street from Grease Ridge Mall. And we have services here on Sundays and on Wednesdays. Sunday mornings, we have our Sunday school, which takes place over in the classroom area. We meet over there at 10 o'clock in the morning, 10 a.m. on Sundays. And you're invited to join us uh, at that time. We have different age brackets and age groups that join with us. And then also at 1130, we meet right here in the sanctuary. 1130 is our morning worship service. And you are invited to come and join us for any of those services along with our midweek service. The Bible study takes place in the same place as Sunday school over in the classrooms on the other side of the church. If you come on Wednesday night, the difference is you want to come around the back side because the sanctuary is not uh, on at that time, open light or lit. Uh, you'll see the lights up, but come around the back side and you'll see all the cars there. And when you see the cars, then you'll see a direct entrance to come in. You come in that entrance and right in that hallway is the classroom where we meet for midweek Bible study. Join us on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. So again, Sunday morning services, 10 o'clock, 1130, and then our midweek service at 7. You're cordially invited to join us. You know, I mentioned a, a couple of moments ago that you can help in spreading the word through this ministry, and I also just want to take time to mention an opportunity and need that we have in terms of this ministry. God blessed us to get started in this television ministry a couple of years ago, uh, but now uh, some of the equipment that we started with is getting a little bit older, the camera in particular, uh, it has gotten to its time. Uh, the technology itself is outdated and it's getting more and more difficult to be able even to transfer from the camera into the digital forms of today. And so it's time for us to make an upgrade and I'd like to invite you to be a part of that process. Uh, we need to, to raise some funds to be able to finance purchasing another camera, an upgraded camera, perhaps two. We'd really like to get two this year. And so if you have a blessing that you'd like to share, if you would like to help share this ministry with others, if you'd like to see it continue to grow and expand, I'd like to offer you the opportunity. I'd like to see, really, if, if it's worth it to the community to see this expand. We ultimately would like to be uh, to bring it not only on Cable 15, but onto a, 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 a regular channel in the community so they can be seen everywhere and not just in certain parts.
heart. So I want to see if, if, if it means enough to the listening audience, the watching audience, to be able to take it to that next level. So if you'd like to see this advance, by all means, become a partner in this ministry by giving a donation and a love offering uh, towards this. You can send it again to our mailing address, which I shared with you earlier, 3177 Ladder Road, number 135. And uh, we'll send you back a receipt. Perhaps you have a business or you have something of your own that you're launching. Perhaps you need, want to put a seed offering into something at, at, as the, for the launch of your business. Perhaps you ha, have had a good business year and uh, you have something that you like to share and, and donate to. Or perhaps you just feel the need to be able to share something uh, that's going to bless somebody. Well, this is going to go directly to the ministry that goes out to the community. And it's a great opportunity for you to be involved in helping to share this ministry. So think about that, pray about that, and let God uh, move you in whatever you can do. And don't forget, you're always invited to join us here as well as a shared in our service time. If you're being blessed on the air, you're truly going to be blessed if you come and join us in our services. Now, I want to take you back to the Word of God. I'm taking you back into ministry, and I pray that this is going to be a, a true blessing to you. We've been sharing in the Word of God and different things that are going on, and now it's time to take you back to the Word. I pray that this message is going to bless you in everything that you receive from it. Now, don't forget also, as well, you can always contact us, by the way. You can call us, you can email us, whatever the case may be. We have an email address at Destiny Preparation Church, or you can call Call us even during the ministry. If it's blessing you, if you're receiving something great, feel free to contact us right here, right now. In fact, you can call 789-1DPC. If we miss your call immediately, we'll call you back. And uh, you can leave a message if you like as well, but we'll call you back. If you need somebody to pray with you, if you need some inspiration, feel free to connect up with us. Now, God bless you. I hope that you'll call, and I hope even more so that you come and join us and, and be blessed in the services. But I look forward to hearing from you or seeing you. Through Christ, we are recalled to influence. We were called to influence when we were made. Somewhere along the line, we lost that calling, but through Christ, he recalls us back to being an influence again. As long as we were in the world, we were just doing whatever the world did. But understand this, when you are called back through Christ, he calls you back to be the influence, to be the person of dominion that you were originally called to be. He reminds us again, okay, this is what God has called you to be. When you step into the body of Christ, now you are taking on an influence of Christ, which may be different from that of the world. You may love somebody that somebody else says, girl, you're crazy. You've got to be out of your mind. How you love to treat them nicely. But you are now in a different, you're being influenced by a different stream. You're being influenced by Christ to represent what he ordained and what God originally ordained for us to be. So understand this, when you are in alignment with Christ, how many of you are Christians? How many of you are here to follow Christ? I hope that's why you're here. <laughs> Amen. If that be the case, you are being influenced by a different source than what others are being influenced by. So don't get confused. Don't try and take some of your influence from this source and some from that. Don't try and compromise and blend the two. Jesus said, if they hated me, they're going to hate you. So you may have to decide who you, whose influence you're going to take and then who you're going to represent. As a child of Christ, your influence is supposed to be representing what God ordained us to be, not necessarily simply what we as a people have become. I say all that to say this, being like everybody else is not necessarily all you're called to do. You are called to have an influence on somebody else. And that may mean that you have to be different because if you're not different, then there's no way for you to have an impact. I'll come to that in a minute. Talked about that definition. To have influence is to have an impact on the situation. But if you're not different, you can't have an impact. You're just the same as everybody else. Now understand this, as di disciples of Christ, as disciples of Christ, we also were Christians. Christians are called Christians because we are disciples of Christ. The Bible tells us in Acts that in Antioch was the first time they were called Christians. The disciples were called Christians. The disciples are those who follow or apprentice after someone else. A disciple is a follower. It's an apprentice, someone that, that desires to learn and develop to what somebody else, some leader, some mentor shows you. A disciple is a pupil, one who learns from, a student who learns from a teacher. 
so that they can then incorporate the things that they learn into what they do going forward. We as disciples are those who have committed ourselves to learn of Christ and to be like Christ. Disciples are called to two things, and this is important. Number one, we're called to be like him. And that's what hopefully many of us are striving for, right? I mean, striving to be like him. If God said love, we want to love. If God says have peace, we want to have peace. If God teaches joy, amen. If God teaches us that we can heal, if God teaches us to have authority, whatever Christ teaches us, that's what we want to do. So we said before, whatever works that he did, greater works than these. The things that Christ showed us by example are the things that we are striving to be like and take on. Amen? If Christ did it, we want to do it. If Christ didn't do it, we don't want to do it. He is our influence. He is our example that as Christians, we are striving to be like. But there's a second thing. Number one is to be like him. Number two is to draw other disciples. Amen. To draw others. This is very important because oftentimes we spend about 90% of our Christianity focused on us. But there's a second part to our commission, and that is to draw others into what we have received. Thank God I'm saved. Thank God I've been blessed. But don't you want somebody else around you to be blessed too? Yes. Don't keep your blessing all to yourself. The blessing of coming into the house of the Lord, the blessing of being touched in worship, the blessing of hearing from God, the blessing of knowing he's in your life, the blessing of knowing that you're saved eternally, the blessing that knowing that God can fix your problems, the blessing of knowing that God will take you through whatever you're going through. Amen, that's a blessing. But don't you want to share that with somebody? Our second part, the second aspect of what we are to be are those who call and commit, call, compel others to be what we have been, which means we have to be of influence to somebody else so that they too can become what we have become. We read it earlier, Matthew 28 and 19. Go ye therefore into all nations, teaching them, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things. Go ye therefore, baptize them and teach them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Your job now that you have been called, your job now that you have made that commitment to me, your job now that you are part of the body of Christ, your job now that you are saved, isn't simply just to continue to become more saved. Been there, done that. You don't have to be saved every week. Hallelujah. Well, amen. <laughs> you shouldn't have to be saved every week. You might need to be encouraged every week, though. Praise God. Amen. You need to be fed every week, continuously. But this is not just a matter of you getting bigger, stronger, fatter, and happier. It's not about getting more prosperity in your life. Amen. I just want to be more blessed. I want to have less problems. I want to have a bigger house, a nicer car. That's my definition of Christianity, is for life to get better. Hopefully, life does get better. But... It's not just about you. Now, you got to do this. Look at somebody right now. Help me out. Look at somebody. Tell them. It's not all about you. Come on, tell them. They need to hear it. Come on, speak the words. It's not all about you. Amen? Your being saved is bigger than just you. We talked earlier this, this morning in, in, in Sunday school about Samuel's mom and all that she was going through. Hannah. And the fact that what she was going through was bigger than her. She didn't know why she was suffering, why she was hurting, but guess what? There was a bigger situation at stake. You got to read the whole story and the whole thing. There's a bigger situation at stake that she knew nothing about, had nothing to do with. But she was suffering in preparation for what God was doing for something that was bigger than her. Amen? I imagine Abraham Lincoln's dad, if he was around, must have looked at his son and all the craziness is going through his presence and said, Lord God, what did I do? <laughs> this man is turning the whole country inside out. What am I, what was I, who, why did I, you know? Uh -huh. But yet he had an influence on something that was far greater than him, far greater than his son, far greater than even that moment in time. It's impacted an entire lifetime and lifetime of lifetimes. 
You have to understand that there are things that are bigger than just you. So your being saved isn't just about, thank God, I'm up to par now. I'm faithful to church. I'm giving in the offerings. I'm here on time. I'm involved in the ministry. I'm, 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 I'm doing the ushers or whatever it is piece I'm doing. I'm singing in the choir. It's not just about you. It's about you now being able to have an influence on somebody else. Because your job doesn't end just because you got saved. Your job ends when you bring forth fruit and multiply. What came in through you should multiply through others. If you want to leave, see what, what it is to have influence, what it is to have a legacy, then look at those that have come to Christ because God saved you. Those who have heard, those who have seen, those who have watched the change in your life. How many people can you speak of that saw the change in you? Maybe you were bad. Maybe you were really bad. Maybe you were ugly bad. But how many people had the opportunity to see the change from bad to good and understand what that means? To realize you're not the same. A lot of us try and hide it. Yeah, I've been changed, but, you know, I'm still cool. I'm still, yo, we still, mm-hmm, yeah, right, mm, yo, now still. No, 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 they don't need to see that you're still okay with them. They need to see that you change. And they need to see what goes along with that change. You need to quit trying to hide your Jesus from your old friends. If they can't handle your Jesus, then let them go their way. But let them know that it meant enough to you that you were willing to let them go. And if they can handle it, tell them to come on with you. If they can't, you got to go your way. Y'all helping me preach. That's good. Be an influence. Be an influence on somebody. We are called. We are called. We are to be the compelling influence on a world that has lost direction to God. How many of you realize the world has lost its direction? They're trying to claim it, trying to pretend, oh, yeah, we know God's still up. Yeah, yeah, still good. Yeah. The Bible says having a form of godliness but denying the power. Yeah, they, we, they, God, we know God. The Bible tells us even the angels, even the, even the devil knows there's a God. Great. Good for you. But that doesn't mean that they know the direction to God. That doesn't mean that they're pursuing after God. We are to be the force, the compelling force that makes a change, that's disruptive, that says, okay, yeah, yeah, but that's not right. Yeah, yeah, but no, that's not good enough. Just knowing God is up there is not sufficient. There's got to be somebody that steps in the middle of it and disrupts what everybody else says is okay. Just because everybody else is saying it's good enough just to know there's a God. No, it's not. Somebody has to disrupt that. Otherwise, everybody just keeps following the flow. Doing like everybody else. If it's good for them, it's good for me. Guess what? Somebody has to show something different. A disciple compels other disciples through demonstration. You have to do before you can endorse. You know what I said? You have to do before you can endorse. Yes, Jesus is, is a good thing. No, no, you have to do something. You have to demonstrate before you can just say. You don't tell your kids you need to eat that and you won't eat it. <laughs> you have to do. Tell your kids you need to go, go to bed and before you go to bed, you know you need to pray. But you won't pray. Send your kids to church instead of going before them. You have to do before you can endorse. So the first thing is you have to demonstrate what it is we're talking about. If you're going to compel other disciples, you have to demonstrate what a disciple is supposed to be like. How are you going to sit on the sidelines, ain't going to nobody's church, and tell somebody, you know, you really need to go to church. You need to find a church. Well, listen, we've had people recommend people to come to this church that don't even go here. How'd you find this church? Somebody told me they should, they, I should come to your church. So I was in need. I was having problems. They recommended we come to you. Well, who are they? Uh -huh. <laughs> you have to demonstrate. You have to do before you start endorsing. Otherwise, your endorsement doesn't mean much. What good is it you to endorse something or somebody that you won't use? You find people on television endorsing products. I just love Acme soap. This is the best soap ever. They, don't use, they never use the soap. Amen. Don't have it at home. But they end, oh yeah, use this soap. Seriously? 
You have to do. So the first thing is you have to, through demonstration. Secondly, by encouraging. You have to encourage someone. The important thing here is you have to be willing to take a position. You have to be, well, what do you think we should do? Hey, I don't want to be in, I don't want to get into that. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I think we need to, I just, I'm just going to leave this woman. I'm tired of her. I'm going to go find me another woman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what do you think? <laughs> hey, hey, that's, it's, up, you know, you know, it's on you, man. I don't want to get involved, you know. Listen, you don't have to tell them exactly what to do, but you can point them in the right direction. You know what I recommend for you? You need to search out God on this. You need to consider what God has to say. I can tell you, I can point you in the direction of where to go to get God's understanding on this. Why don't you call my pastor? Let me, let me give you his number. Let me, why don't you come to church with me? Let me introduce him to you. You have to be willing to take a position. If somebody is on the job and they're doing such and such, and it ain't right, you can't have an influence if you won't take a position. You're just going to watch and be neutral. Hey, that wasn't me. I didn't do it. I don't know. Hey, you know, I'm not involved. That, that, that's their business, not mine. You won't have an influence if you won't take a position. Christ's disciples demonstrated through their behaviors. They demonstrated and they encouraged. They demonstrated through their behaviors and through his power. They did it. They demonstrated it. Christ had power. They demonstrated power. Christ healed. They healed. Christ cast out demons. They cast out demons. Christ prayed. They prayed. They demonstrated what God was all about. Not only did they demonstrate it, but then they encouraged through his teachings. Go ye therefore, teach all nations. They taught what Christ taught them. If we're going to be disciples, we have to demonstrate and we have to encourage. We have to teach what the things of God are all about and we have to show it in our lives, in our examples, by our faith. How can we serve God and demonstrate God if we have no faith? We tell people God is a healer, God is able, God is a wonderful God. We trust ourselves in God. But the moment a, situ a real situation comes in our life, we're running, jumping, hollering, screaming, oh, oh, oh. we're as bad. How can you influence them as you, if you are as messed up as they are? Every time something happens, you back to them crying about all your troubles and all your problems and why me and I can't handle this and I can't take it. What kind of influence are you? when you're just the same as they are. If you're responding, if you're doing, if you're behaving exactly the same as people in the world do to different things, how can, that's, there's no influence. There's no impact. Impact only comes when you disturb the normal situation. Your influence as disciple compels others. In order to do that, you're going to have to offer something that's different from the norm. You can't be the same as everybody else and have an influence. You can't accept everything else that everybody's accepting and think you're going to have an influence. Influence only comes when you move in the situation and cause a change, a difference from what's already there. You've got to be different from the norm. For, so, so for those of us who have problems with being different, you're not going to be an effective disciple. You have to be willing to be different. Somebody say different from what others are and others are doing and others are saying. You're telling the same old crazy jokes that they're telling sitting in the same old conversations, indulging in the same old things that everybody else is around you. If you're no different from them, how are you going to have an influence? You've got to be willing to be different. You've got to be willing to stand out. Your opinions, your behaviors, the things that you do, your priorities in life. Hey Amen. what you doing going to, well, I got to go to church on Sunday. What? What? We, why? Why do you need to go to church? We got something else going on. You have to be willing to have different priorities than what other people have. I'm sorry, I can't make that because that's just a, you know, that's, that's, just a, that's not in a time, amen, that works because I have other, other things. Well, can't you move them? Well, can't you move yours? Why you got to have the dinner right at the time we have church, 11 o'clock? You know you don't eat dinner at 11 o'clock any other day. Why you want to have a dinner at 11 o'clock on Sundays? Can't you have your dinner at 3 I'll come at 3. Why you got to have it at 11? Right. Amen? Summertime. Oh, you got to come to the picnic. Great. I'll be there at 2 o'clock. Why? It starts at 10 o'clock. Well, why can't you start at 2? 
You have to be willing to be different. Your priorities have to be willing to stand out. If you're constantly compromising your priorities to align with other people are doing that don't know God, you can't have an influence on them. Am I making this clear to you? You've got to be willing to be a new and a different standard from what other people do. Listen, Christ, as a new standard, offended those who had the previous standard. The scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, they were the standard. When people wanted to be like God, that's what they, they, they did them. But Christ stood out from them. He didn't just, Christ could have easily come in and said, okay, you know, I'm going to fit in. I'm just going to be amongst the Pharisees and Yes, I'll be godly and holy and, and, and do all these things and I'll do everything. You know, I, I know it's not important, but I'm going to do what they say because I just want to fit in. You know what his, his, the least of his priorities was? Fitting in. The least thing he was worried about was fitting in with them. He said, they, they know not the scriptures. No, the power, they, so, they don't know what they're talking about. Why should I be trying to be like them? Why are you trying to be like Christians that are like people that know nothing about the reality of Christ. Why? 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 Why are you worried about being like them when they don't know about God? You don't have to worry about fitting in, compromising, aligning, trying to, you know, be more okay, watering down because it's too heavy. I don't want to have, I'm not going to talk about this subject because I don't want y'all to, you know, I know y'all don't deal with, with this. So, you know, listen, you have to be able to stand out to make a difference. And if you won't take a stand on anything, you cannot make a difference. This program is being provided by Destiny Preparation Church. We'd like to invite you to join us in any of our services. If you're looking to better understand God's purpose for your life, if you'd like to experience the true presence of God, or you're in need of a church home, join us at Destiny Preparation Church. For more information about our services, ministry, or church family, See our website at destinypreparation.org or call 720-5426. Join us on the road to your destiny.